Hi, welcome to the show today. This is the Jenkins Art Studio and I'm Katherine Jenkins. I'm going to paint a beautiful painting for you today, something that I think you're going to learn a lot about. It's uh, the poinsettia, the beautiful, beautiful Christmas flower. And today we have the poinsettia with a beautiful gold leaf border. Let's take a look at the one I'm going to be painting from. There it is. Isn't that gorgeous with the gold leaf border and the little uh, leaves, uh, holly leaves and the holly berries around the top and the bright, bright red flowers and the Christmas boughs. So this is going to be a good one to learn on today. We're going to have lots of neat things to show you. So let's get started because we won't have time to put it all in if we don't get going on this. Um, first of all, I want to show you a little bit about the gold leaf. This is um, gold leaf, the way it comes in sheets like this. And it's very, very uh, light, very fine paper, just like um, a feather. It's so thin. And it comes in sheets in a little packet like this and you put it on with sizing. It even sticks to your fingers. If your fingers are the least little bit wet, they'll stick to them. So make sure your fingers are real dry. You put it on with sizing first. You put the sizing on with a brush and um, you put the sizing on the canvas. Let it set uh, for about a half hour wherever you want your border. Uh, you mask off your border and wherever you want um, the gold leaf, you put the sizing underneath. Let it set for about a half hour. Then you put your gold leaf sheets on and then rub off the excess. And all the directions are usually on the packet of the gold leaf, um, how to do that gold leaf. So we have masked um, off an area here. I just made up a design of about oh, maybe two inches from the inside, from the edge and then put the sizing around here and the gold leaf, curve the top. You could make little um, round half circles here like I did on the original one and, and bring your gold leaf into a little rounded corner instead of the square corners. And then I just went around with a little liner brush and put these little holly leaves with some greens and siennas and a little, little, um, little vine coming around and then some little red berries up there and that's optional, you don't need to do that but it's kind of a neat little interest. I call this a Christmas card painting because that's what it looks like is a little Christmas card design. And then I went in and painted white with a large, um, oh, this is a 32 background brush and just painted white all the way around. Oh, this is after I put the drawing. The drawing of the poinsettia goes on first and that'll be in the painting packet, um, the pattern and you put your drawing on with graphite paper. Then you go around and paint the whole inside uh, white with white oil paint. We're gonna be using oil paint now. And stay out of the area where you're going to put the uh, red for the poinsettias. You don't wanna go in there with your white. And then I just loosely crisscross some real soft pastel colors, some yellows, some pinks, some blues, greens. Just crisscross them on and soften them out with a blender brush. Keep it real pastel. And then I went in with green and sienna with a smaller brush, oh maybe a, oh maybe a 22 or a number 20 badger. And we just went in and crisscrossed some greens, tucked some dark, dark greens around the flowers and then crisscrossed them out in a light uh, stroke to get them real soft out on the edges here. And then to start the poinsettias, we went in with Crimson. This is just crimson oil paint. Very, very thin, lots of medium. And I'm going to pick up some crimson and load the brush. And come on up to the canvas. And I'll just show you how I place this in. This is just crimson with a lot of medium. And just fill in your drawing. And you can make some little tips. They have some nice little points. And just very loosely fill this color in. And I did that all the way around on both of these flowers. And now we have a little bit of a darker color in here. And I'm going to reach down and pick up a touch of medium and crimson and a little bit of black. Now be careful, not too much black because it will turn your whole poinsettia black. That makes sense. So you want black with mostly crimson. And that's where I went in with these shadowed areas right here. See some of these areas are a little bit darker. And up here we'll do that on this one. We'll shadow just a little darker. Because a poinsettia has a lot of layers of petals and there's real dark, dark red underneath some of the other layers that are gonna be in the front. So we'll just loosely place this around. Remember, don't go in with lines. You don't want 
You don't want this. You don't want hard lines. You just want the flat of your brush and some dark shadow area. And if it does get too hard looking, the shadow area, just take your mop and soften some of those areas out. See how that pushes that back? The mop blender or your other blender is fine, is great. That will save everything for you. And remember, this is oil paint, so if you mess up, you can just wipe the whole thing off and start over again. You can't really make mistakes. That's what's so great about oil paint. It stays wet for a few days. So let's get up here and start. Oh, you know what we're gonna do before we do the flowers, the red of the um, flowers, the highlights of the flowers, I think we'll put in some shadow leaves way in the background. Those are those gray green leaves that are kind of just the misty leaves way off in the background. And we'll start a few of those up here. Come on down to the palette. I'm gonna pick up a touch of medium, not too much because remember you're already working on a wet background. Now this color I've mixed up here, this is mostly white with a touch of black a touch of green, and a touch of cerulean blue. I'll say that again, that's mostly white, a touch of black, a touch of blue, and a touch of green. So it's a gray, green, blue color. And that's gonna give us those little shadow leaves way in the back. We'll start back here and get some of those long tapered leaves. Start with the edge of the brush and just flatten out and taper off. You see that? Flat paper and we've got a lot of these on the technique tape and these are so simple now because I'm working on a wet background these just go in so simple you go right over that border break right over the border I'm gonna reach down pick up a little more now this time I'm gonna vary the color a little bit I'm gonna add a little more green you don't want your foliage all one color sometimes you want more gray sometimes more green come on over here and we'll just make a little stem the edge of the brush and we'll wiggle, let's get over here where you can see that. Wiggle the brush and lift off. Wiggle the brush and lift off. Those are those little long leaves that are kind of like exotic looking leaves. How about another one over here? And come over and break over the border. And let's do some more of those. Remember, vary your color. Sometimes I might add a little touch of sienna into the gray green to give it a little warmer color. And back up here, a stem. These chiseled edges on these badger hair brushes make the greatest little skinny stems. Wiggle color down through the center and stroke toward the center vein. And there's your big leaf. Another one here. That's that big leaf that we so often put in rose paintings or poppy paintings. And maybe another here. And maybe a few here. Now don't forget to overlap. Let's, let's put a little more green. I'm gonna reach down for some more green, a little more sienna, make that a little darker because I'm overlapping another leaf so I want it to show up in front. So this one like right here, let's make it a little darker. There, now it's gonna show up in front of those other ones. And let's come down to the bottom and we'll just swing a few right down here, there. That, and stroke toward the back. Now these um, poinsettia leaves, they can be a little more ragged on the edges because they kind of have a lot of little jagged edges. So you can leave some breaks in your strokes, in between your strokes. Sometimes you can use just the edge of the brush like that and get a little bit more of a ragged leaf. Let's do the other side of that one. A little bit more of a ragged leaf. Now in a little while, we'll highlight some of these leaves. Another one here. And we're gonna get some dark ones in there too after we get the flower in. And let's bring some down here. Those are those little guys that are just gonna be peeking out from behind the dark ones. Little guys here. And they get smaller and smaller, more graceful as they come out to the end of your composition or out to the edges of the composition. 